Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is just going to be a beginner's tutorial because we seem to be getting a few beginning players and they're not quite sure what to do on the game. So after you get through all the tutorial nonsense because it doesn't let you skip it and you get to the real game um, where you're not playing bot matches and the game isn't just making you navigate through all the menus and all the nonsense. I really hate that part of it. But um, once you do all that stuff, uh, what you want to do is go into your settings. Now, if you're not running on a great machine, you're going to want to turn your settings way down. Otherwise, you can leave them as is. Um, the first thing you want to do is go to your sound menu, because sound in this game is super important. Um, and in the sound settings, you can actually turn up useful things and turn down the, uh, the nonsense things. So what you want to do, if you look at my sound... I mean, you can do, like, I don't like the BMGs and stuff, so I turn all the background volume down, the character voice stuff down, um, but the, the few things that you do need to turn up is enemy weapons and enemy footsteps, all the way up. Uh, there are must, you have to be able to hear in this game, and if you're not using headphones, I suggest you use them because they are really useful tools for not dying. Um... You can keep your own weapons, you know, at 100%, or you can turn it down a little bit. Sometimes, you know, I run with it at 80, but I do like to hear my own guns and stuff. Um, teammates' weapons, your preference. I like mine a little bit lower uh, than mine. Like, I, I still want to know when my, enemy, when my buddies are shooting, but I don't want to hear it over, like, enemy shots. So, then for all the rest of the stuff, like teammates' footwork, turn that crap off. Your own footsteps, turn that down. Uh, environment sounds, turn that down because they're way too loud already. Um, and then after you get that set up, what you want to do is set up your controls, you know, however you like. Um, then you want to go to, God, they changed every, I used to know where everything was and they changed all the menus because there's always some jackass dev who's like, I can make it better. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, people get used to where things are, and when you change crap up, it sucks. So, if any devs watch this, you're an asshole. Um, so, you can do this as your preference, but, like, I turn all this off, all the auto-looting crap. Um, I'm just tired of it. It, it swaps out stuff that I want to keep, and, you know... It makes me drop stuff that I really wanted to keep. You run across something crappy and it ends up picking it up for you. I don't like it. Um, but your preference. If you're playing on phone, it's probably more convenient. But if you're on PC, like, you can loot pretty quick. Because controls are just better on PC. Um, where's the... I don't know where anything is anymore. Um, auto open doors, you want to turn this off. Uh, just for the fact that it'll automatically open doors and give away your position when you're trying to sneak around. And if you're new to the game, sneaking is your best option. If you think you're going to jump into a game that's been going on for this long when everybody's fully geared, running T5 with super kitted weapons, and you're just going to pop in with your little your, your shaft that they give you, and you're going to run around the map and murder everybody, false. Um, you're going to want to go sneaky. And just, you know, loot up. Get, get some basic loot before you actually start engaging really high to your players. Um, you definitely need, like, a decent pocket sniper. So I recommend, like, maybe a cheap Scourge. Uh, and in the beginning, you're not even going to have enough slots to, to pocket a sniper weapon. So um, you're going to have to look at some tutorials and figure out some decent guns that you can build in the Ford. Um, I would recommend Silence Boots. So, like, once you get done with all these menus, you set them to how you want. There's a, there's a smart medicine tab, so this is something you might want to set up. You get your medicine however you want. You can look at mine if you want to copy it. Go for it. Um, turn your doors off. Fix your sound. Fix your buttons. Set up your auto loot however you want. And then um, just some tips for beginning gameplay. These boots will save you a lot of trouble. And just walk everywhere. There's no point in running. 
um, people hear running and they run towards it, or they hear gunfire and they run towards it. So run suppressors and run silence boots. It's pretty simple. Um, uh, especially if you're not geared, you're not used to the game, you're new, you don't have a lot of money or a lot of gear. Uh, for the most part, just grab any silence boots you can grab. So either, you know, the level 2s, there's not much difference in price between these and the other ones. At least there didn't used to be. Let's see what these other ones are running. So the base boots, yeah, like, they're not that much cheaper. So, your preference. People will pick both up, so... Don't think that if you get the lesser version of the boots and you ensure them that they're going to come back because they're not. Uh, people know by now to pick up silence boots. Um, ammo wise, use blue ammo if you can afford it. If not, I know in the beginning you pretty much have to use whatever you can pick up, which is, you know, try try to go for green at the very least. Uh, avoid gray if at all possible. And if you are running gray, try to run like bursting bullet on your magazine so you're gonna want to learn what some of the mods do on the attachments for guns so your sight your muzzle and your magazine is where all your damage mods come from and then basically your stock and your grip are recoil control uh, scatter control that type of stuff and then certain guns require kits to attach certain attachments and you'll see basically by the the things that are grayed out, like poles, you need a, a muzzle mount to equip the muzzle slot, stuff like that. So just tinker with the gun modding system. Um, go through the mods. Like take some time before you actually jump into matches and stuff, and and look at some of the mods on here and figure out which ones are good. Um, just a brief overlay, like rifle, AP, airtight are really good mods. These are like your three top tier for any kind of muzzle device. So if you find those in match, um, especially rifling or AP over airtight, but airtight's a close third, pick those up and put them on your guns because they'll do more damage. Um, for close range guns you want to run cluster. For everything else you want heated or bullet recycle. Anything with AP on it is like going to give you way more damage. So anything with armor pen. And uh, when in doubt, you know, pull your warhead out. These are usually fairly cheap, and they burn for an additional effect, and it will get you kills. Uh, especially in the early game, like quick draw mags. So basically, like, uh, extended mags right now are the most expensive mags in the game, for the most part. Mostly because there's there's far too many guns, and there's even a new gun that's coming out that like the best mags you can put on are extended mags. Um, drum mags are the next most expensive, and quick draw mags are the least expensive. So if you're looking for a mod and you can't afford it on either extended or drum, but your weapon allows for a quick draw mag, which is most assault rifles, then you know maybe pick it up on here because it's way cheaper. Like 4K for heated is not bad. So. These are, you know, pretty optional. I recommend you use lightweight. Like, light stock is, is the key to, to getting around the map quickly. Otherwise, guns are going to weigh you down. You're going to be slow. So, lightweight is, like, your best stock thing. Um, for your grips, you can run basically whatever, but, like, a standard grip improvement is pretty good. It gives you decent recoil reduction if you can afford it. Um... But I mean, I know in the early game you got to use basically whatever you can pick up, whatever you can find, until you build a base of cash. And then once you have a, a little base of cash, then you can start buying silence boots. Um, you can buy level 3 backpacks so you can actually carry out more loot. Um, otherwise, you're going to be picking up level 2 backpacks in the, in the matches. Um, some really cheap, decent helms and stuff are like this helm. It's like, for a 95% damage reduction, it's only like 7k, which is pretty good. Um, and then, you know, once you can start affording T5s, T5s will really keep you alive longer. But if you're just going budget in the beginning, um, I'd recommend, like, picking up T2, probably anti-rad and maybe damage conversion. 
A lot of people are running snipers. The damage conversion will protect you from snipers and uh, close range shotguns. It's not going to do much against automatic fire. It's going to eat right through it. But an anti-rad, um, if you use smoke, smokes are pretty effective tools if you know how to use them. But a lot of people are running thermal, so heat on their their helmets. Heat analyzer. This is an effective mod for you to use as well, because um, it allows it it'll highlight people on the map that are moving in heat, and you can see them through smoke and everything else. But if you want to counter that for yourself, you can run the heat, and you can also run anti rad on a on a vest. And that'll protect you from being detected with radars, uh, from fire grenades, and from being highlighted by uh, the heat analyzer. So it's pretty useful. Like, I still use it all the time. Like, one of my favorite budget build is just this armor. It's 3K. I run this all the time. Um, especially when the cheats are bad. Uh, and then, you know, you go with, like, a, a level 2 helm with maybe amplifier. Because, once again, like, 80% of the game is sound. So you want to be able to hear where people are. That's how you detect them, for the most part. Uh, snipers are the only thing you got to worry about not being able to hear. Because they're going to be eyeballing you from afar. And there's really not much you can do about it other than try to stay undercover. Um, don't stay out in the open too long. Don't loot too long. Because people will come out and just pop you while you're while you're looting, um, and then don't immediately jump on bodies. Like games like this, I know it's it's tempting. As soon as you kill a guy and he's fully geared, you want to run around and run over there and scoop up all that sweet loot. But check the area first. Like a lot of times, people will hear you firefighting or they'll hear the gunshots. They'll run to it. They'll wait for the firefight to end, and then they'll wait for you to start looting whoever you killed and then kill you while you're doing it. So what you want to do is you want to circle the area a little bit and scout it out and make sure nobody's going to pop you while you're looting. Then run out, grab your loot real quick, and then get the heck out of there. Don't stay out in the open too much. And just sneak around. Um, sneaking is the best way. Like, you'll see all these other guys that they put on, like, the fastest boots and they run around. I mean, a lot of them are cheating anyways. They're ESPing, so they, they don't have to worry about people sneaking up on them or shooting them that they don't know about because they can see everybody on the map. But for everybody else, you know, all the normies out there like us, yeah, sneaking is your best bet because if people can't hear you, then you you get the drop on them and not the other way around. And that's how I pretty much stay alive in the game as I sneak around. Um, in teams, that's a lot harder to do, especially if you don't, like, have... Teammates that'll also run silence with you and walk, they'll give away your position. In team games and stuff like that, you'll see a lot more running. So you may just want to opt out of silence and go full running and just assault people with the team. Uh, but I, even in teams, I still will run silence because while my teammates are, are pushing in on people, I'll try to flank around with silence and, and take people out from behind. It's an effective strategy. Um, and then... Once you've got all this stuff set up, and you are familiarize yourself with the game, you've done a few runs, you've looted and stuff, you may want to get on the Discord, find yourself one to two buddies, and start working on dailies. So, a couple ways you can earn in-game money, which is this stuff that you normally have to pay uh, real money for, you can do your missions every day. So, if you do these missions every day, which is usually like complete some team games, loot some stuff, jump a bunch, move some meters on the thing, you do all these these quests every day, log in. Um, one of the things I didn't know whenever I I started was like there's a quest in here that that wants you to share. I think I've already completed it for the share one times. So you're like, what the heck is that? Well, basically you got to get like some sort of skin, and then it, there's this share button. I don't know if you can do it for, like, weapons as well. Okay, yeah, you can do it for weapons as well. You can hit, like, share, and then this will pop up. You hit save, boom. It's shared. That should complete the mission. Um, you'll get these tokens. Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't worry about these too much in the early game. They're kind of pointless. There's nothing really great you can buy with them. What you're going for are these. So if you have to do almost all these quests every day. 
So if, if you're not into it, you're never going to get the 30 cash points, but you could get the 5. So every week you can get 35 cash points from this, and then every 3 days you can get 5 to 200 cash points in theory from this, but you're most likely only going to get 5. I think I've gotten 10 one time uh, after playing this game for like 8 months. So when they say up to 200 cash points, I'm like, it must be like winning the lottery to get 200 cash points because I have not seen it yet. You're going to get 5. And these quests are basically pointless. Like, use locate one time. These are not real quests. Real quests would be like, kill 3 players with this gun or something like that. But they have these nonsense quests. Like, pick up items of green quality or above, it's like, okay, so play one match and loot a box. And then you complete them. And then th your last quest will be something not super hard, but they're a little bit more of a quest than these first two. These first two are basically nonsense. But you will get, like, five cash points every three days from this. Um, then there's, like, there's all these events and stuff, and you can tinker with those. Uh, there's ways to win skins and stuff. I wouldn't recommend putting out, like, if you're thinking about, like, getting a skin like this thing or something, like, look how many draws I had to make to get this thing. And you have to imagine that every one of these rolls, they want you to pay 20 cash points. And you, $10 gets you 680 cash points. So you can do the math. Like, this cost me a good bit of money to get. So if unless you're being real dedicated to this game, like I wouldn't bother spending real money on it. The only thing that's worth having for real money is the privilege card here. It's five dollars. You get an extra safe slot. You get a lot of warehouse stuff. You get extra experience, which will help you level up faster. You can refresh your prism longer. You get more auction listings, and you can create more stuff. And then on top of it, you get a little bit of money every day. You instantly get 50k when you buy it. And then every day you get five from this, and you'll get uh, like 500 to 1,000 from this. So, but if you're looking to make a whole lot of money really fast, you can just pay real money and buy like these and sell them on the auction house, or these and sell them on the auction house, because they're worth a whole lot of money if you go to the skin auction. So, like you could sell these for 740k, like these these, these, you know, you'd be rich instantly. You just got to pay real money, which is the whole point of free to play games, is to get you to spend real money. So, that's about the gist of it. Um, there's, there's a redeem tab here in the trade. This is where you can get some warehouse expansions. Um, I think there's also a safe slot thing you can buy here early on. I've already got it, obviously. Um, once you once you get everything, you have premium, you get the battle pass, because the battle pass gives you an extra slot now, and the new season's coming up. And, like, the season stuff is getting more and more expensive. To get the battle pass, I think it was like 30 last game, or last se this season. So next season, I can only imagine it's going to be the same or more. Um, and it basically gives you an extra safe slot and a skin and a bunch of other random nonsense but the safe slot is really where it's at so you can have all six safe slots if you get everything you unlock like through the redeem um, and then you know look at some of my other hints and tips videos I go over prism and ways to make money I've already got videos on how to make money every day but that's like the basics of beginning the game you wanna adjust your settings familiarize yourself with uh, weaponry and you know play smart buy useful mods for your armor don't waste your money on garbage mods so go over some of my weapon videos and you know figure out some decent builds that are cheap and effective for you that you can afford and that's gonna be it for this beginner tutorial I think I covered everything it's kind of a long video already you could join a clan it's hard to get into a clan um, in this game, but once you do, you can start earning clan points, and there's stuff you can get in here, all that stuff. Uh, just keep working on your, your ops mint stuff, quests, do these things to level up, because once you get to 30, you get all the safe slot unlocks for that, 
And then you get your other one from the Redeem, I'm pretty sure. And then you get one for Premium. The Privilege card. And then you get one for the Battle Pass. But don't buy the Battle Pass right now because the season's about to end. So I, I wouldn't bother. Just wait, I don't know, another week or so. Uh, I can't remember what day it is. I think it's like the 12th or something, maybe. But that's it for this video. I uh, hope it was useful. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.